Well, tell us about the start of the local speedway in this area. The racetrack started in 1957. There were some guys ahead of that that raced on the road and whatnot. They were young guys. Most of them, Marvin Stryker and that, never even had a license. They weren't old enough. But anyway, it basically started from that. Uh, the English church minister, Father Bellway, got, got it going, but it really didn't turn into anything. And then uh, some of us older guys, we used to go to Digney Speedway and Aurora in Seattle. So anyway, we decided we'd make our own track and uh, God had a taxi business in Agassiz. He, he gave us some land we could use down. It was around the burrow pit. And the burrow pit was when they built the dike. That's what they took the soil. So we had our super elevated corners. Um, they were just a beautiful place, but it had water in the center of it. That was one thing it had against us. And <clears throat> what we had to do to fix the track RCNR was a logging outfit just above Harrison, and they had an old champion horse grader. Like originally it was pulled with horses, but <clears throat> Bruce Campbell, they had a six by six logging truck. So we used it and we got the old grader down there and then we put the track in and <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me for laughing, that's quite comical when I think about it. And then when Bruce couldn't pull it, Siggy Martin had a Royal Jubilee Ford tractor, and there was one other farmer had a, it took two, two Ford tractors to pull it. And then we shaped the track and uh, had a few races there, and probably the funniest thing had happened, Bruce Campbell had his 40 one Ford out there before he had a roll cage in it even, and he rolled it. So anyway, <laughs> it was kind of harem scarum. And then uh, Keith Hardy, he had built a good car, and it ended up, he nerfed Larry Vogstead into the center, which I told you about the water. So his Ford got mighty wet, and so did Larry, but it all worked out. But <clears throat> After it was about a year and a half we had it and then Abby lost the land to a finance company so then we were without a track but we had 200 and some dollars and the car club we had then was called Piston Pilot so we put the money in the, in the account in the bank for when they started again they would have an account and everything. So years passed and we kept looking for land and the Rod and Gun Club was up by the graveyard and uh, it had been kind of let go. A lot of the old Rod and Gun guys were first row vets. They had died off. This is the graveyard up on the hillside. Up on, yeah. up on the, where it is now. Yeah. And and uh, not to be confused with the other cemetery. No, no it's this uh, is near, near where the correction institutes yeah, are now yeah, up there. And anyway, there was a pistol range was there too. That was old guys from the First World War. They still had their forty fives that they had got <laughs> from the army. Well, anyway, it was kind of a deal. We. We were wondering how could we get that land, but it had gone to rack and ruin that leaves had grown up into alders, and there was just one from the rest to the target was only about five feet wide, broken bottles and everything. So uh, we decided, well, if we all join the rod and gun, there's not that many left. We should be able to swing a deal with the council. So anyway, the car guy joined the rod and gun, and then we went to the city, and the town fathers were really good. They knew we had lost the other track, and we got an agreement from them. 
And one alderman, Norman Morrow, the old plow guy, he was quite a character. And what he said to us, like we were one of the guys who went to the meeting, if you don't break your necks, that'd be fine. <laughs> we told him what rules we were using, rules from Digney Speedway, and it was going to be safe, and everything would be fine, and people could go up there and their kids could learn to drive. So anyway, they allowed us to go up there, and then when we laid it out, the only way we could do it, it was uphill a little bit the way, and we had to turn it. And uh, we just had a little loader at the time. So anyway, the first year we started to make it was 1970, and we had to go around three old growth fir stumps. So we had to make, it was only three tenths of a mile long, but <laughs> we couldn't make it any larger because of these big stumps. And I thought, well, someday we'll get some powder we'll fix some stumps, but right now we'll get race, and which we did. Um, it was in June we had our first race, and uh, our first spectators were real good. They were the Dukabor people that lived down at the bottom of the hill, and uh, it was more or less just a donation. It was just a fun, it was always a fun track, and uh, anyway, <laughs> As we progressed, the stumps really bugged us, like. And then that fall, I got a hold of some Amex from one logging outfit we had were working for, and I had some caps and powder here for, for I had a well business, so. And then, uh, so that basically took the little loader up and dug under these stumps, and those fir stumps have a big top root, so you got to get under them, and that's what I did, and we used about four bags per stump, and we lifted them out of there, which real good. Then we hired Mel Geyer with his D8, and he filled the holes, shaped the track. We made it. It was just, it was 1,158 feet and 40 feet wide. Um, uh, up, uh, there was a grader I used to lend from a guy that was on the way to Harrison, Crumb by name. His kid had a car racing there, so he graded it with it. And then Jerry Pickard got us a grader from Pretty Timber, which we kept. And from 1970 to 78, it was a dirt track and we put some clay on it and old guardrails and whatnot. And that was basically the start. In 1978, that's when we decided to pave it. But it was a lot of money, and one of the guys raising uh, worked for Columbia Beth Athletic, so uh, he kind of made a deal, and we got the payment, it would be $10,000. So the bank, we went to the bank and they wanted half the money. So then we all threw in money and uh, got 5,000 from the club and he lent us 5,000 and we got our track paved. It brought other cars from Langley had shut down so they were it brought pavement cars, which are a lot lighter built car than the dirt car. My wife made hamburgers, hot dogs, and everybody's wife seemed to pitch in. And some of the best races we had there were Powder Puff, where the women drove, but it was awful hard on cars. All right, thank you, Bunk. Very interesting. That was the dirt part. <laughs>